A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Galatians. Brothers and sisters, if you are guided by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are obvious, immorality, impurity, licentiousness, idolatry, sorcery, hatreds, rivalry, jealousy, outbursts of fury, acts of selfishness, dissensions, factions, occasions of envy, drinking bouts, orgies, and the like. I warn you, as I warned you before, that those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. In contrast, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such, there is no law. Now those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified their flesh with its passions and desires. If we live in the Spirit, let us also follow the Spirit. Verbum Domini. Those who follow you, Lord, will have the light of life. Blessed the man who follows not the counsel of the wicked, nor walks in the way of sinners, nor sits in the company of the insolent, but delights in the law of the Lord and meditates on his law day and night. He is like a tree planted near running water that yields its fruit in due season and whose leaves never fade. Whatever he does prospers. Not so the wicked, not so. They are like chaff which the wind drives away. For the Lord watches over the way of the just, but the way of the wicked vanishes. Dominus Fabiscum, et Lexia Sancti Evangelii Secundum Lucam, The Lord said, Woe to you, Pharisees! You pay tithes of mint and of rue and of every garden herb, but you pay no attention to judgment and to love for God. These you should have done without overlooking the others. Woe to you, Pharisees, you love the seat of honor in synagogues and greetings in marketplaces. Woe to you, you are like unseen graves over which people unknowingly walk. Then one of the scholars of the law said to him in reply, Teacher, by saying this, you are insulting us too. And he said, Woe also to you, scholars of the law. You impose on people burdens hard to carry, but you yourselves do not lift one finger to touch them. Verbum do homini. <laughs> 
Today we celebrate the feast of Saint Seraphin of Monte Granero in uh, near Loreto, Italy. He's a Capuchin saint. He lived from 1540 to 1604. He, before he joined the friars, he was a, a shepherd. His family did uh, masonry work, bricklaying work, and his, his father died and his older brother tried to get him into the business, but he had no aptitude for it. And finally, the brother gave up in frustration, and uh, he, he went and joined the Capuchins. <clears throat> he liked shepherding because he had time to pray, time to contemplate, think about God. And for the Capuchins, he became a porter, the quester, one who went out begging, answered the door, helped the poor that came to the door. And he was known for his unaffected simplicity, his close union with Christ, his love for the poor, and there's many recorded miracles of him supplying the needs of the poor and uh, with very little. And he even walked on water as one of his miracles. He's trying to get to the Shrine of Loretto, had to cross a river that had risen, and he, he walked across as uh, it was solid ground. He would spend three hours in prayer before the Blessed Sacrament daily and was a uh, a man of simplicity and prayer, a lay brother. And it seems God loves uh, shepherds in many ways. A lot of saints seem like they're shepherds and have a humble background and have time for the Lord, you know, time to give to God, to develop a spiritual life, a deep life of prayer. I think Galatians picks up this theme of a spiritual life, you know, of walking by the Spirit. And Paul, here in, in Galatians 5, is continuing this theme of, of not falling prey to the works of the flesh and that we're liberated uh, by Jesus, through saved by faith in him, where the law could not save. He refers to it as the custodian. custodian. You know, it guides us, points out sin, but in itself it cannot save us. And a big theme throughout the letter is he's against circumcision for these Christian converts or Gentile Christians coming into Christianity that they do not submit to circumcision, which for the old law was the doorway into the old covenant. And you see the theme that we cannot fulfill the law. We cannot you know, obtain this perfection of life by ourselves. Through faith in Christ, we have the grace. We're joined to him by faith. We become his adopted children, become brothers of Christ, adopted by the Father through the gift of the Holy Spirit. We're saved through that adoption, through belonging to Christ, receiving his Holy Spirit. As, you know, Galatians has the famous line that you know, we receive adoption as sons, we receive the Holy Spirit, and we can cry out, Abba, we can call God Father. We're baptized into the body of Christ and there's no longer any distinction. So by his Holy Spirit, then we can fulfill the law. It's Jesus that fulfills the law, that gift of the Holy Spirit. We can live the moral demands of the law. That holiness is truly possible. And we become the true heirs of God. You know, that we become true children of God. It's a beautiful doctrine, you know, the doctrine of adoption, this doctrine of participation, and that's what we need for holiness. So Paul exhorts us to walk by the Spirit, not the desires of the flesh, meaning flesh in a, a negative sense of this fallen human nature, our concupiscence, our inclination to sin. And if you're unclear what that is, he makes it very clear today. <laughs> Works of the flesh are immorality, impurity, licentiousness, idolatry, sorcery, hatreds, rivalry, jealousy, outburst of fury, <coughs> acts of selfishness, <coughs> dissensions, factions, occasions of envy, drinking bouts, orgies, and the like. And <coughs> um, he also adds, at the end, um, that self-conceit, at the end he tacks on, oh yeah, self-conceit, provoking one another, 
uh, and having you know, no envy. So that's got to peg you somewhere, right? It's one of those things, you know, self-conceit, selfishness. I mean, we all fall apart. You might not be a, in some of the more radical things he lists, but uh, certainly we're all prey to envy factions, self, uh, self-centeredness. That's works of the flesh. That's when the flesh gets up on us and, and is driving the bus, right, and running things. So he contrasts that with to live by the Spirit, and if that Spirit's working in us, then we'll have the fruits of the Spirit, which is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. And he says, against such is no law. There's no law to confine it or to restrict it. We have this new freedom, as we heard yesterday, this new freedom in Christ that knows no bounds. So which do you want, right? Do you want love, peace, joy, patience, or this other stuff that it's its own reward and its own darkness and blackness? And it does take us into that darkness. <clears throat> and when I read lists like this, certainly I'm convicted in my own life, and I always think of the young people today, that they are so fragile and vulnerable to this, you know, manipulated by cultural pressures to fall into this. And even, you know, young Catholics can get mixed up in the wrong crowd, even after maybe being instructed, you know, there's just so much pressure to lead them astray. And it's such a battle to stay, you know, walking by the Spirit. But God hasn't abandoned us. There is a path. You know, the Catechism has a beautiful section about growing in virtue, you know, having the battle for chastity, fighting fighting to fulfill uh, the moral teachings of the church. And it, it talks about human effort. It talks about perseverance, not giving up, not succumbing to discouragement, you know, not taking scandal by other people's poor witness. The Catechism speaks of a dependence on grace, that we absolutely need God's grace to grow in holiness, to live a moral life. It talks about the necessity of daily prayer, that communion with God, where we, the most ordinary way that we call down that grace upon our life, that we seek God's help. And to live a sacramental life, we receive the sacraments, baptism, confirmation, go to, to Mass as often as we can, according to our state in life, what duties allow, certainly the greatest source of grace in our life. Speaks about, um, you know, in another section, it talks about adoration, that there we can come and receive grace. And, then, and growing in virtue, it also talks about self-knowledge, to know ourselves, to know our weakness, to know where we're tempted, to know what we have to avoid, what we have to be careful about. It talks about fellowship, you know, that we can be supported by one another, we can be witness to one another, you know, through other people's good examples. That we can simply be encouraged by one another. You know, find the, find the people that help you to live a Christian life. You know, we might need different things. You know, maybe we need a mentor. Maybe we need a father figure or a mother figure, somebody to help us or just a friend. You know, to know ourselves, to know our weaknesses, to know what we need, and to be open to that. Certainly to avoid sin, the near occasion of sin, and... And the saints witness to us the power of the rosary. You know, that, you know, sometimes we can't put two thoughts together in our meditation or whatever, but in, ro- in the rosary, we can just give ourselves to our Blessed Mother, who's our spiritual mother in the order of grace, that brings us these gifts of salvation, of eternal life that Jesus won for us. We run to our mother, right, when we're really in trouble. And, She's not giving a lot of advice and instructing, but she's helping us. You know, she's she's helping us to to stay on the path, to hold on to the graces that we've been given. And I was talking to a group here yesterday, and I said, you know, we have been given so much. You know, you you turn on the the media, look on the internet, and you see what our culture is, you know, is how what it's giving people is, is so empty and so little. As Catholics, we have the gospel truth proclaimed to us. We have a sa- the sacraments 
these sources of grace. We have the witness of the saints, spiritual writings, fellowship of believers. We know we're taught how to pray. We're given so much, and yet we can cast that grace away. Our Lady can help us to hold on to it. All those graces we've been given, all the communions, all the prayers we've said, you know, at times we can uh, just cast that aside and do our own thing. She helps to awaken us, you know, to, to hold on to that grace. I recently read an excerpt from <clears throat> Sister Faust or St. Faustina's Diary of Divine Mercy, and Jesus was talking to her about fighting temptation. And he gave her these counsels, and I thought they were really striking. He says, do not fight by yourself. That's the first rule, right? The gazelle that gets separated from the herd gets taken out by the lion, right? Do not fight by yourself. Do not rely on your own strength. He says, disclose to a confessor which I would assume also means to, you know, it's proper in confession, you know, we confess our sins, but also to confess, it's proper matter to confess our temptations. You know, we can receive absolution and grace for even that. And so he says when we do that, it loses its force. Even to share it with a friend, somehow it loses something of its force over us. We're not trying to battle this ourselves. We're not in the dark, we bring it to the light of day, and uh, it opens us to God's grace, I think. He tells her, do not lose peace. Boy, that's a big one, right? Padre Pio would warn against that, too. You know, he'd say, if the devil steals our peace, he's won a, a great victory. And we can be rattled by our temptations and by strong forces that, you know, that we can sense that are against us or temptations or whatever. And if we stay focused on the Lord, we can have that peace, even if we're strongly tempted. And he says, live in my presence. You know, focus on his presence in our life. He says, ask my mother and the saints for help. Ask my mother and the saints for help. I like that distinction a little bit too. You know, Mary is top of the food chain there, but the saints can definitely Help us and just rattle off your favorite saints. And it's powerful. You know, you don't have to have the most beautiful prayers and the, just the right prayer card or just the right format. Just start rattling off your favorite saints and let the Holy Spirit inspire you uh, for the saints that can come to your help. And he says, know that I am, you know, quote, I am looking at you and supporting you. I'm with you. I'm supporting you. I see your struggle. I see the battle that you're in. And he says, be willing to fight uh, because, be willing to fight and that the victory is always on your side. You have, uh, you know, he is with us. We have the saints with us and he's won the victory. For me. You know, Christians are working from the point of victory. He's conquered sin and death. He's crushed the head of the serpent on Calvary. So we're working from that position of strength and victory and be willing to fight you know to to make human effort that we have to cooperate with that grace that we're given and he says realize that you give me glory in this struggle against sin and that you amass merits for yourself and it's a chance to show fidelity to him it's a chance to show love for god in these temptations and trials and I try to encourage people in confession, try to remember myself, that we can, you know, he doesn't abandon us in our falls, that we can profit, you know, if we humble ourselves, if we grow in faith, if we grow in distrust of ourselves and greater trust for him, that's a great profit from our falls that he can draw, that we can still be climbing the ladder the moment we turn back to him. As St. Claude de la Combeire said that, he said, if anyone is lost, it's not because of the gravity of their sins, it's because they refuse to turn to God for mercy. And I'm, you know, we're, I, as a priest, we encounter that a lot. People 
think their sins are too much. They can't come to church. They don't belong there. They're afraid to confess. But the saints witness to us, you know, that's nothing compared to the grace of God, to the mercy of God. There's nothing he cannot forgive. His mercy is greater than our weakness, and uh, that should encourage us to trust in that mercy to grow in holiness. And if we do that, we know, uh, you know, we know the love, the peace, the patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness that the world cannot give. He gives us a joy that the world cannot give by fidelity to him and to the gospel.